When using a dog grooming clipper, how do I know what the different numbers mean? Or do I need a clipper or a trimmer? Well, choosing the best clipper and blade for your pet can be confusing. So we are here to help. This is Beth. She is a customer care pro at Revival Animal Health, and she's gonna help us sort through the clipper blade and the options and all the features and kind of answer some of those more common clipper blade mm -hmm. questions that we hear from our customers. Mm -hmm. But before we get started talking about clipping, we want to take a quick moment for clicking. We encourage you to click that subscribe button below to subscribe to the Revival Animal Health YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our pet health videos. Okay, so Beth, let's first start with choosing a clipper versus a trimmer. Now, when would you want a clipper really instead of a trimmer? When, when do you use those? Well, a clipper, like what you're holding, that is more for the body. That's just more for all around the dog's body. And then the trimmer you're gonna wanna use around the paws, um, maybe around the hard to reach areas, maybe around the ears. Um, just in those, those teeny tiny little areas that this big monster can't get to. So we've determined we need a clipper and mm -hmm. at Revival we actually sell three different brands. There's mm -hmm. Oster, Andis, and Walls. So, mm -hmm. but before you pick one, there are some factors, features, things you want to consider because not all clippers are the same. They don't all work the same and mm -hmm. they're kind of different for each person. So you want to make right. sure the preference is right for you. Right. So you want to decide at first if you want a cordless or a corded. Clipper. Um, consider where you're going to be grooming. What does your station look like? Is an outlet nearby? Um, how long do you need each grooming, you know, how long do you need the clipper to last for each grooming session? Uh, what type of coats are you going to be grooming on a regular basis? Um, there are some clippers that run either cordless or corded, so you also want to make sure that wherever the outlet is and you have a corded clipper um, that you're not getting tangled up in it all the time. So, and if that is, if that would be the case, then you might want to go to a cordless trimmer where you just charge it between appointments and then you don't have to worry about dragging the, dragging the cord everywhere. Now, what about the strokes per minute or the SPM? A lot of times that's on the packaging on the outside. What does that mean and, and what's the difference there? Um, SPM means uh, strokes per minute which means that the blades move from one side to the other and the SPM is how often it moves per minute. So like on this clipper, it literally, the clipper is just going like this. And I would say you want a, a higher strokes per minute if you have a lot of dogs coming through because then it, the clipper will be able to keep up and won't, it won't get hot on you or anything. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the weight? That might not be something you would think about or necessarily look at when you're picking out a clipper, but I know this one is a lot heavier mm -hmm. than the one you're holding, and so that really does make a difference if you're holding this for a while. Right, it does. You know, you always want, um, some people, they like something that's very lightweight because if you hold a heavy clipper for a really long time, your arms are gonna get tired. So you wanna make sure that you find a clipper that's really just right for you. You know, whenever you look at it, just kinda move around with it because you are going in a lot of different directions when you're clipping. So just kinda, you wanna make sure that it fits comfortably in your hand, but it doesn't put a lot of stress on your arms. That's a good one. Now let's talk about noise, because that can really vary between clippers as well. You know, they all make noise, but you wanna find one that is comfortable for your pet. Right. And you know, all clippers make noise, some sort of a noise. So the best practice to do is um, you can just bring the dog to the grooming salon or not if you choose to groom your dog at home, just get them exposed to the noises of a grooming appointment would be. So like the sound of a clipper or the sound of a blow dryer, um, it will just help them be less stressed and it will prepare them for a lifelong time of getting their spa days. Oh, every dog loves a spa day. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say your dog maybe is anxious during the grooming experience. Mm -hmm. Are there things you can do to kind of help calm his or her nerves? Of course. Um, taking frequent breaks is really great. Um, you can also do lots of petting, reassuring, and you can also give them a lot of treats just to make it a more positive experience. Exactly. I've never known a dog to refuse a treat during mm -hmm. any experience like that. <laughs> so once you determine the clipper you want, you'll need the right blade mm -hmm. but not all blades work with every clipper and what do you need to look for to make sure the blade you are getting will work with the clipper you have yep we have regular blades and then we have finishing blades so a regular blade is where it's a single number so like a four or a seven and having and it also has a skip tooth assembly so it will leave the hair slightly textured and then if you choose um, a blade with an F behind it that's a finishing blade so a 4F or a 7F 
um, that will give it a nice smooth finish for you. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. And what factors should you really take into consideration when choosing a blade? Um, you'll want to make sure it's a cool running blade because you're going to be running the clipper for a long time and you don't want that blade to get hot. Um, so you'll just want to remember that even if the blade says it's cool running, um, while you are grooming, no matter what blade you're using, just put it to the inside of your wrist every once in a while. Just, you know, do a couple rounds and then put it to the inside of your wrist because if it's warm for you, it's going to be warm for the dog too. And if you have a coat that it requires a little bit more TLC, um, you're going to want to start with a skip tooth blade first, so like a four or seven just to get the bulk out. And then you can always come back with a finishing blade to finish it up. Now, what if you're attempting to maybe clip a thicker coat with a finishing blade? What will happen in that situation? Um, well, it could catch on the dog's fur for one, and that can cause it to pull. Um, but then it will also make the blade work harder. And we really don't want the blade to work harder. You want it to work smarter. So if you, if you would try to use a finishing blade on a thick coat, it's, it will probably become hot and then you'll either have to switch out blades or it just take a break because the dog is probably going to have some discomfort. Just like human hair, dog hair comes in lots of textures and lengths. So make sure that you have the proper blade or maybe not even use a clipper at all. You know, um, some people think that you have to use a clipper in order to groom a dog and you really don't have to. It all depends on that coat type. Um, so if you're grooming a breed that has a super heavy coat like a golden retriever or a Siberian Husky, you really don't even have to use a clipper on them because they do have that built-in cooling system. So it actually may cause more harm than good if you, if you use a clipper on them. So let's say you have a dog with one of those built-in cooling systems like you mentioned. What should you do in that situation? In those situations, you might not even want to clipper them at all. Um, you'll actually probably just want to give them a really good scrub down, give them a good bath. You'll want to brush them out, get all that excess fur out, and then just take a scissors and just lightly scissor around there. Um, with those cooling systems, it's not, it, you could possibly do more harm than good if you clipper it because they're used to that. They like to have that double coat because then they stay cool in the summer and then it also keeps them warm in the winter time. Even though it seems really thick to us, their body temperature needs that to stay comfortable. Okay. And now what about getting sunburned? If you clip it too short, what can happen there? They Dogs get sunburned just like humans do. So you don't want to take, so whenever you do have, like if your dog did have surgery and that where that part is, is clippered up, you just want to put a little bit of sunscreen on it or something just to keep it nice and just away from the sun. Now what about the blade numbers? What is the difference there between all the different numbers? Yeah, so a blade number will determine what type of cut you get. So the higher the number of the blade, the shorter and finer the cut. So for example, a 40 blade um, is at the skin. It's a surgical cut where it goes all the way down to the skin where a four blade leaves the coat longer. If you're not sure how short you want the hair to be, you can always put the blade, um, put a blade guard or people also call them attachments, um, on the blade, which will leave the hair even longer. So then you can really play around with what type of length you want the dog's hair to be. And you overall. can always go shorter, mm -hmm. but you can't put it back, you can't put it back on. No. Nope. <laughs> now we do actually have a helpful dog clipper blade chart available in the Learning Center at RevivalAnimal.com. It's a great resource. It really helps you kind of choose which blade you need, depending on the breed of your, your dog. Um, and I do want to talk a little bit about the attachment combs mm -hmm. that you mentioned earlier. We do have some of those here. Now, some clippers come with them, or mm -hmm. you can buy them separately as an attachment kit. Mm -hmm. How and when do you use the combs versus just the blade? Mm -hmm. Well, if you want just like a clean buzz, um, you're going to go with just the blade itself. Um, but then the attachment is if you want it to stay more flow, you know, just a little more flowy. Um, when it comes to attachments, the bigger the teeth, so you can see that this one has um, slightly longer teeth compared to like this one. So this one is going to leave the hair a lot short or a lot longer, where this one is going to take it just a little bit closer to the skin. So the bigger the teeth, the longer the hair is going to be. Good tip there. And finally, many people may have a human clipper at their home that they use for themselves. Do you recommend using a human clipper or should you use a clipper actually designed for a dog? I would use one designed for a dog just because dogs have a lot, you know, just like humans, they have a lot of different hair types. Um, but they also have a lot more hair than humans do. So I would recommend just using, if it's meant for a dog, just to use it for a dog. If you purchase it for a human, use it for a human. 
Okay, good guidance there. Yeah. Now, if you're still not sure which blade and clipper or attachment comb or anything like that to get, make sure to call our Pet Care Pros. You know, Beth and her team, they're happy to help you and listen to what you need and help you choose the best one for your pet. And in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to the Revival Animal Health YouTube channel and happy grooming. Hi. Hi, if you're watching on YouTube, consider subscribing to the Revival Animal Health YouTube channel so you don't miss out on our new videos. If you have any more questions on grooming or any other pet health issues, call our Pet Care Pros at this number or check out our other pet health videos.